Okay, so welcome to uh, this uh, demo session where we wanted to share uh, ideas from our solution on what we have done in our solution to integrate risk management into the first line core business activities, because that's where, based on our experience, we see that 99.99% of the financial services organizations globally are still struggling uh, with how do we make sure that the first line is proactive in managing operational risks, but also yeah, other types of risks. But we'll, we'll try to focus on your operational risks today. Uh, and then how do we how do we integrate the activities around management of risk in the day-to-day -day process rather than it becoming like a compliance or a, uh, an extra burden activity uh, as perceived by the first line. So, so here's the agenda of what we'll do. So I'll just go uh, through a quick introduction. We'll do one slide on the company overview. I'll do three or four slides to just position uh, the solution uh, and uh, particularly focusing on that first line integration aspect. And then we'll spend bulk of the time in the demo. Uh, if you have Q&A, then you post your Q&A on uh, the chat uh, functionality, uh, or you can just unmute and ask uh, your question verbally also. Okay, so, so we can either do that during the session or we can do that uh, at the end of the session. So, so in ter terms of introduction, uh, I am Manoj Kulval. Uh, I am co-founder and chief risk officer here at Risk Spotlight. Uh, we've been yeah, with Risk Spotlight for eight years. And uh, before Risk Spotlight, I was global product manager for a US company uh, called SAS, uh, where uh, I was a product manager for the GRC product. So I come from a software background. And then in the last eight years, as part of Risk Spotlight, we also then uh, I've also got involved in business consulting and helping uh, organizations with frameworks and best practices uh, side of things. So, so we like to think that yeah, I've, I've grown beyond uh, just providing software uh, type offerings. Uh, and I am joined by uh, CEO uh, uh, and my co-founder, uh, Simon Wilkins. Simon, do you want to just do a quick 30 second overview? Yeah, I'm Simon Wilkins. I, as Manoj says, I'm the CEO of Risk Spotlight. I, I'm known to some of, some of the people on the call. Good to see some familiar faces. Um, I've been involved in operational risk for uh, 14 and a half years. I can always do it based on the age of my youngest son because uh, he was uh, my, my wife gave birth literally as I was on the on a major global uh, implementation at uh, Avian Amro, which is where uh, Manoj and I actually uh, actually met. Mm -hmm. So it's been an area that uh, we've been involved in for for a long while, um, and hopefully you'll see the sort of fruits of uh, of our labors and our our uh, business expertise that we've built up over the over those years in terms of how we think risk management uh, should be done and a solution that should uh, should support that great thank you thank you simon for that uh okay so then just one slide on the company so like we said uh eight years uh, we've been in the business uh we're based in uk uh, but we also have a center of excellence uh, based out of India. So that's where a lot of our research development uh, is, is based out of the Indian operation. Uh, we only focus uh, on GRC topics within financial services. So we don't work in other industries. And even within GRC, 90% of our work is in the space of operational risk and operational resilience. So, so those uh, sort of domains. And we provide yeah, consulting content software solution, which we're going to talk about today, uh, but also support uh, to organizations uh, and then also training courses in terms of classroom or video type training courses. Uh, and then I've listed yeah, some of the customers uh, we have worked with. And for the context of today's session, I also wanted to highlight that we are the official reseller of Refinitiv's risk management solution. So the solution we have created uh, is based on a platform provided by Refinitiv. Uh, so some people may not be aware of Refinitiv, so I just wanted to include this slide. Uh, so Refinitiv uh, was carved out of Thomson Reuters, so it was their risk business which was carved out uh, and uh, sold to a investment group who then sold it to London Stock Exchange uh, last year. So, so Rao Refinitiv is part of the London Stock Exchange Group. So the software solution, the platform, which you will see today, uh, was created by uh, Refinitiv and we have added our business expertise on uh, top of that platform. 
Uh, and, and this is sort of how uh, we position ourselves that Refinitiv uh, has uh, this platform called Collect Connected Risk Software, which when we've compared Salesforce, ServiceNow, so we've, we've looked at various platforms available in the market, and we found that this was the most flexible platform that what you can do in other platform in three months, it can be done in two to three weeks, you know, with this platform, that it was really created with the, uh, with the purpose of uh, creating business application very rapidly. So that's why we selected this platform after looking at uh, all the available platforms out there. And Refinitiv has also then created their own risk management, audit management, compliance management uh, software modules, which they typically sell to the tier one and the tier two customers. So they will only talk to you that if you have revenues about $3.5 billion. And last year, we uh, were appointed as the reseller uh, for the tier three and the tier four market. So, so that's where we've taken the same platform which they're selling to the tier one banks. And then we uh, built our own risk management experience and expertise, which is more geared uh, towards the tier three and tier four firms because uh, tier three and tier four firms generally have a lot of budget constraints. They don't have... Uh, uh, oh, okay, I see some background noise. Hello. Hey, hi, hi Saurabh. Uh -huh. I'm allowed to know. Okay, all right. Let me let me just uh okay, excellent. All right. Uh so so that's where we primarily focus on the tier three and the tier four customers. So that's why yeah, we also wanted to provide a software solution, uh, but we wanted to make sure that yeah, this software solution was different than the hundred plus software solutions available already out there. And and that's where the first line integration is the is the element where we are differentiating in, in terms of the solution. So, so that sort of is the positioning that the underlying platform is uh, coming from Refinitiv. And, and this is a sort of the last two slides before I jump into the software. This is what you will find in any risk management software. So there are 100 plus risk management software out there. And you'll find that yeah, in most risk management software, you can have a library of your risk, library of controls, policies, incidents, issues, indicators. So most of these topics, you know, you'll be very familiar with, but this is what majority of the risk management software out there provides. And, and this, when we sort of did the research on why we are, uh, are not able to get the buy-in from the first line, uh, it was very clear that none of these are important from the day-to-day -day perspective for the first line. That the first line people, they don't come into work to manage risks. They don't come into work to assess controls. They don't come into work to you know, capture data on indicators. They're coming to work every day for uh, conducting a business process. They're running a project. They're developing an IT system. And if the risk management software we provide to the first line doesn't have those elements which the first line is actually working with on the day-to-day -day basis, then it will become very difficult for them because when, every time they log into the software, into the risk management software, they don't see anything related to their business in the software. So this is where we had to then extend and do more than what typically all the risk management uh, solution vendors out there provide, where we had to go and think about that, okay, what is first line doing? So if you want to integrate management of risk in the first line, we need to see what the first line is doing. So we divided that into the external environment, the strategic uh, uh, aspects of your business, and then the operational aspects of the business. And then we identify that, okay, what is happening in each of those areas? So, so then we identify uh, the key aspects on the external environment, like you know business environment. So when things like Brexit, COVID are happening, then you want to record those so that you can then uh, map those against how that may impact some of your processes, how it may impact some of your IT systems, some of your risks. So we identified what are the key elements then first line is using or working with on the day-to-day -day basis from an external perspective. Then we identified what are they working with at the operational layer. So at the operational layer is where you know, we provide products and business services through the different channels to the outside world. We have processes, we have assets, we have projects, we have policies, we have different stakeholders who we need to sort of keep aligned. And then there is the strategic layer, uh, which is that you know, everything is then important uh, for achieving the strategy of the organization. And that's where then the senior management and the board, then they're interested in uh, the strategic aspects. That is our strategy going in the right direction? Are we achieving all our strategic objectives? Are we within the risk appetite? If there are any strategic decisions being made or strategic projects being made, 
which may then impact uh, how certain processes may operate in the future or certain assets may operate in the future, then we said that, okay, we have to provide all of these elements in the software. Because if we don't provide all of these elements in the software, uh, which the first line is then working with on a day-to-day -day basis, then there will be a disconnect when first line, you know, log into a software. So, so this is one of the major differentiators of what, you know, the 100 plus uh, software vendors out there that they cover only some of this aspect and they only cover these aspects from a linking perspective that yeah they will allow you to link a risk to a process but they will not allow you to manage the process in the same software and 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 if you want first line to use risk management as part of their day-to-day -day activity then we need to give them a tool where they can actually manage that process in the tool and risk management then is just a subset of how they are managing their process. Similarly, if we have a product manager who's managing a certain product, then we want that product manager to use the same software for managing the product as they use for managing the risks related to that product. Okay, so, so, so this is where, sorry, I had to just mute, uh, there was some background noise. Uh, and, and this is what we created. And then we have embedded the risk layer against each one of these components. So all that risk management functionality you saw on the previous slide. So if I just go uh, to the previous slide here, that we've integrated all of these capabilities in each of those business topics. So you can take a product and then you can identify the risks related to that product. You can take a process and you can identify the risks related to that process. You can take a third party and then identify the risks related to that third party. So that risk management then is integrated as part of what first line is doing on the day-to-day -day basis. And that's why then we can't, we don't call this as a risk management software. So, so that's why we say that, yeah, this is a integrated business and risk management solution because that's what first line is running the business. They're operating the business and we want to give them a tool where they can use it for running the business and as part of that, if they can also then use uh, uh, manage the risk uh, as part of that core activity, then that's where we would get that uh, integration. So this, I think, is, is what we see is the missing link where majority of the software then only focus on the risk topics, which are great for the second line, but uh, that's not what the first line are working with on the day-to-day -day basis. Okay. And then this is what we provide in our solution. So because we, we see that we need to provide a, to first line a tool to manage the business, we can't create artificial walls between conduct risk management and third party risk management and operational risk management or enterprise risk management. So the way we've created the solution is that you just have to buy one solution and you can manage all types of risk using that same solution. So we've highlighted some of the key areas here uh, uh, where you only have to buy one license from Risk Spotlight and you can use that solution for operational risk. You can later on expand it for enterprise risk management. You can expand it for third-party risk management. And what a lot of our competitors do is you have to go and buy different modules for them. So if you buy the operational risk module, then you have to pay a fee. And then if you want to buy the third-party risk management module, you have to pay a separate fee. So they're selling you the same software for six or seven times, which then over time increases the cost of ownership. And in our case, you know, that is that is not our objective, right? So our objective is to help first line do what they need to do on the day-to-day -day basis, and they should be able to manage any type of risk then using the solution. So, so we uh, we've, we've made the pricing in such a way that you just have to buy one license uh, and you can use the software for managing all the different types of risks as part of your process or as part of your IT systems or uh, as part of uh, business services, for example, from a resilience perspective. Okay. So let me then go into the solution and show how then the solution looks like. And then I'll also sort of yeah, point out uh, the differences uh, in terms of how it uh, compares to uh, the typical risk management uh, offerings out there. So in this case, if I log in as one of the vendors, uh, so one of the things the first line is doing on the day-to-day -day basis is they are working towards achieving certain business objectives. So in this case, if a retail bank, for example, has an objective that they need to increase the customer acquisition by 12% in 2021, then a lot of people in the retail bank now will be working towards achieving that objective. So if we want first line to use a tool, then we should have those objectives they're working for on the day-to-day -to -day, day -to -day basis 
within the software so that they can then manage the risks related to those objectives in an integrated way. Yeah, so in this case, uh, I am showing on the business performance management, uh, there are charts which are showing how we are doing in terms of our business objectives. So nothing to do with risk here. So, so this is just about whatever the sales objective, revenue objective, market share objective, whatever the objective of a particular business unit is, they will be able to see the status of how their business unit is doing in terms of a particular objective. And then on a quarterly basis, most organizations do like a strategic review where they look at the objectives and they may assess whether we will be able to achieve this objective by the end of the year. So that's where in the solution, we provide this objective status where they can then define saying, okay, how likely is it that we will be able to achieve our objective? And in this case, uh, you can see that increased new customer acquisition by 12%, that that objective, the likelihood of achieving is below 70% at the moment. Okay. So what you can do then is you can click on that particular business objective, and then you will be able to see some of the details on why we think uh, the likelihood is below 70% for achieving that objective. So there'll be some explanation. So then whoever then logs into the solution, they can easily see how, why uh, this objective may not be possible to achieve. And then what do we need to do to increase that likelihood of achieving the objective? Uh, then we allow them to manage that objective. So this objective can then be mapped to a certain strategic element. So we also allow definition of the strategy, like we saw on the PowerPoint slide. Uh, so you can define the high level strategy of the organization and those objectives can then be cascaded so that uh, the system can then also be used by the senior management and the board to track how effective we are in terms of executing uh, our strategy. Similarly, we use the key indicators functionality, in this case also as a key performance indicator. So against that particular objective, then I can have this key performance indicator called new customer acquisition rate year to date. And that can then tell me whether we are getting close to that 12% or we're not close to that 12%. Yeah, And in this case, we can see the latest value is 3.10% is what we've been able to uh, achieve. So that sort of is first element of allowing the business unit to manage their objectives because this is where their personal bonuses, their compensations, they're tied to this objective. So everybody in first line then is very motivated to make sure that they're doing the right things on achieving these business objectives. So still we haven't talked about risks yet. So this is just the business objective aspect. Then that business objective may be then connected with what the first line is doing uh, from a business perspective. So this is where in the business management tab, we then allow you to see the connections that, okay, how is this objective then connected to everything else we are doing in the business? So you can see that it's connected to a particular strategic topic. Uh, it is connected to four business processes. So those are the four business processes then we are implementing around sales and marketing to help us achieve that particular objective. Similarly, I can see which business services we are providing, which will help us achieve that particular objective. Then I can see which products we are selling in order to achieve that particular objective. So which of the products are tied around that particular objective. Then I can also see which assets are relevant because the, these assets is where then I get into the risk management realm where we are able to then say that, okay, we have to make sure that these assets continue to operate. Uh, so if we have a mobile banking app, we have to make sure that that mobile banking app continues to operate, that if there was a disruption or customers were not able to use their mobile banking app, then it may create an incident, it may create negative publicity for the, the bank. And then that negative publicity may make it difficult for us to achieve this new customer acquisition objective. So then you link all the relevant elements. So you start to create this 360 degree view of how everything in the business is linked with each other. So that's what you know, we're trying to do here is to link this objective to all the key aspects of the business. Similarly, you can see, okay, which third parties then are playing an important role that we need to manage the relationship with, uh, with these third parties uh, that if you know, these third parties were not able to deliver certain services or products we expect from them, then it can make it difficult for us to achieve that particular objective. Similarly, we have the stakeholders to see what are the different stakeholders who then are involved, uh, who we need to keep satisfied or who we, we need to manage in order to increase the likelihood of achieving that objective. 
Similarly, we may have certain constraints. So this is where every business has some constraint, right? So you may be a large bank like HSBC, or you may be a small bank, and both banks will have their own type of constraints. So, so this becomes then an important part of how the first line is then managing the business on the day-to-day -day basis. So in this case, I may have constraints on the amount of budget we can spend on social media marketing, the amount of budget we can spend on traditional media marketing. So you can then document the constraints which can stop you from achieving that particular objective. And then as part of managing my business, I need to manage those constraints. And then uh, if those constraints uh, reach a certain limit, then I may have to invest more. So if I need more money for my social media marketing budget, then I may have to go to the senior management, request that, and then I can increase that constraint. But at the start of the year, I'll get a certain budget. And then that becomes a constraint under which the first line then needs to operate throughout the year in order to achieve that particular objective. And similarly, then uh, there may be certain vulnerabilities, which they, if they are exploited uh, by internal or external stakeholders, then uh, that may also make it difficult to achieve this particular objective. So if there is potential publication of fake news about the firm you know, on the social media platform, uh, you know, which happened with Metro Bank, for example, uh, not last year, but I think in, in 2019, then that may you know, make it difficult for us to achieve that new customer acquisition objective. Uh, and then you can also document the various business decisions uh, which are relevant. Uh, and, and this is where co, uh, standards like COSO and ISO, they talk about that if you want to integrate uh, risk management into the first line activity, then you need to integrate risk management into the decision making process. Yeah. So, and that's where none of the GRC tools out there, they have the functionality to allow uh, businesses to capture and model their decisions in the software. And I'm going to, I'm going to touch that a little bit more because that is also a very important element if you want to integrate risk management into the first line activity, then we have to provide first line the ability to model their decisions, to capture those decisions uh, in a little bit more structured way. And similarly, if you have some policies, so in this case, we have a social media communication policy we've created, which then is aligned in, in terms of that particular objective. And then you can track what is happening in your business environment, which maybe then uh, affect the likelihood of achieving that objective. So like pandemic, of course, now is impacting that. Uh, then um, all major uh, banks are reducing the number of bank branches. So that's again, an industry trend. So that may be then connected to uh, this particular objective, the government lockdowns, rise in use of social media platform for consuming business related content, you know, is another then external trend, which may then affect or uh, the organization need to consider in order to execute its actions and strategy in relation to achieving this particular objective. So those are all the different elements of what the first line then can use to manage the business. So, so far, we're just talking about managing the business. We haven't talked about risks at all, because first we need to give first line a structured tool, because a lot of tier three, tier four banks, all of this may be happening in Excel, uh, like, you know, with, uh, with uh, larger banks like a Barclays and HSBC, they may have systems around third parties, they may have systems around the IT assets, they may have systems around uh, products uh, and business services, but in a lot of tier three, tier four banks we work with, a lot of this is happening in Excel. So, so with this solution, what we want to do is we want to migrate from that Excel into a structured tool so that you can then capture all of this relevant information in one place and everything then is linked to each other. Because once you start doing that link, you can then see the interconnection. So you can see that if there is, if you make a change to a particular process, then which objectives you know, that process may affect, which IT systems that process may affect, which third parties that process may affect, that you'll be able to start see, uh, you'll be start uh, visualizing those relationships between the different elements we saw on the PowerPoint slide. Okay. And then we go into the risk management part. So first we need to give them a tool so that they can capture and, and all the first line is already doing this, right? So none of this will be new that they will have details of their process. They will have details of their products. So all of this will be in Excel, Word, PowerPoint and lots of unstructured information. So all we're doing is we're, bring, we're giving them a structure so that all that information can be captured in a structured way with an audit trail and a workflow and security and all those benefits, which you don't get with Excel. And then once they are comfortable using the solution, then we can bring the risk management component. So this is where then the risk management, we can say that, okay, you can then use the same solution 
to manage how your business unit is achieving this particular objective, but now also manage all the risks related to this particular objective. So in this case, they can then map that objective to the different appetite uh, statements. So in this case, the first appetite statement is, you know, the firm has zero tolerance for intentional mis-selling of products and services to customers by intermediaries. Because in this case, we're talking about new customer acquisition. So a lot of sales related risks, you know, we would be exposed to. So in our appetite, we've said that, yeah, we have zero tolerance around intentional mis-selling, that if our intermediaries are intentionally mis-selling our products and services, then we have a zero tolerance for that. Similarly, we have zero tolerance for our salespeople intentionally mis-selling products and services to customers. And then we have, uh, the firm will tolerate two unplanned outages of customer facing IT systems, but the maximum outage duration should be 30 minutes. So that's where we can't say zero tolerance towards IT system disruption. So in this case, the bank has said that the appetite is that two outages are, ex uh, are ex uh, uh, tolerable during a year, but the uh, the, a disruption duration should not be more than 30 minutes in those two cases. And that can then also impact the new customer acquisition objective because if the systems are down more uh, and the, the news is in the media, then of course, you know, people are not going to trust and come to the bank uh, if they see, constantly seeing and reading news articles that the IT systems of this uh, bank, you know, they, they keep getting disrupted every four to six weeks. Okay. So this is where then we sort of yeah, connect the business and how, how we want them to manage risk as part of managing uh, their business. Similarly, then they can do a overall risk analysis. But before I go that, this is where then they can document all the different types of risks, which they need to manage as a business to increase the likelihood of achieving this objective. So this is then we have the like the mis-selling risk, we have the theft of customer data risk, by criminals, theft of customer data risk by employees, unplanned outages. So, so, so this is where then we make that connection between risk and what is important for the business. Because those risks are only important for the business when they look at it in context of this particular objective. That that business objective is a lot more important for the first line than these risks, if you look at those risks in an isolated way. But as soon as you make that connection, that okay, why these risks are important because if that business unit now does not manage these risks and there are lots of incidents which start to happen, then it will make it difficult for the business unit to achieve this new customer acquisition objective. So this is where we connect those dots for the first line, where generally when they get risk information, the risk reports then are only talking about risks. You know, So we say that, okay, here are our top 10 risks, but we don't connect them. Okay, so how will those top 10 risks impact our strategy? How will those top 10 risks import, impact our strategic objectives. And that's what the first line wants to see, that if the risk reports are not talking about risks and the impact on the business, then they will see risk management as a, something disconnected, that it's not part of what they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. So, so this is then all the standard risk management yeah, capability comes in here, where if I open a particular risk here, so if I open theft of customer data risk, then you, know, you can sort of yeah, document the risks, you can you know, document the causes related to the risk, the impact related to the risk, uh, you have the various assessment methodologies. So all this then yeah, is bread and butter, which all the 100 plus uh, GRC tools, risk management tools out there already provide you know, in terms of yeah, creating your risk library, doing your risk assessments, control library, control assessment. So I'm not gonna drill down into that because yeah, we also then provide all that standard bread, bread and butter functionality, which all the other GRC solution tools provide. But for today, yeah, the focus was more on how do we make this integrated in the first line? So that first line can actually use risk management as part of what they're doing on the day-to-day -day basis. So, so I'll focus on that connection between the first line, what first line is doing, and then how do we embed risk management uh, as part of that? Okay. So, so, so this is then uh, where I link the risks. And then once I've linked the risks, I am able to then see all the controls uh, because each of those risks then will have multiple controls in place. So as an objective owner, I'm able to see if there are any controls in the organization which are not effective because if uh, some of the key controls are not effective, then that may result in an incident and then that may increase the likelihood of me achieving that business objective. So it, then the business unit can keep an eye on all the controls, whether those controls are in the front office, back office, middle office, they'll get a visibility on all the different controls. And then again, if they want to know if a certain control is not effective, they can then open that control 
look at who the performer of that control is, and then they can you know, start a dialogue uh, and communication uh, with them. Okay. So, so that's how we then connect risk management elements uh, in, around the objectives. So, so this is the first part of what the business unit is interested, uh, the first line is interested in, that they come into work every day in order to achieve certain business objectives. Then the second part of that integrations, if I go to the homepage, uh, is the operational resilience. So this is then the, uh, the sort of yeah, new framework, even though yeah, the concepts are still old, but there are still yeah, some new language, new terminologies we have to get used to in terms of operational resilience. But another thing, your yeah, first line is managing on the day-to-day -day basis is they're managing these critical business services, which we are providing to our customers. So in this case, the first line then needs a tool where they can document all their important business services, and then they can use this to manage those important business services. So if I open, for example, this online banking service, then they can use this to document all the details about the business services. You know, like, uh, is that business service being used by vulnerable customers? Uh, is this business service used by individuals? Is it used by organization? They can document, you know, what are the peak times in which that service is used and how many customers are using that service in a peak time. So here we are saying that in a weekday peak time, we have between 1.2 and 1.4 million customers who log into our online banking service. So, so if, we if we had a disruption during the peak time, then that's the number of customers which will get impacted. So, so first line should be able to then document all the details about the business services, and then they can define the impact tolerance to say that, okay, we have, we're defining an impact tolerance of 48 hours here. Uh, uh, and, and then there's another impact tolerance for 72 hours uh, where they can then document that and then they will you know, implement uh, recovery controls to make sure that if there was a disruption to the online banking service, it can be recovered within those defined impact tolerances. But we use the same concept now for services because service then is one of the various things the first line is managing. Then in the business management tab, they will be able to see how that service then is connected to an objective, how it is connected to the process, how it is connected to the different products. So if I was the owner of a particular service, then this will give me the visibility on what are the other dependencies on my services with other parts of the organization. And in the risk management, I will be able to see then what are the different risks uh, which we need to manage. Uh, so in this case, uh, we can then see the different risks. So there are operational risk and there's also one strategic risk here, uh, which are then mapped to this particular online banking service. And again, this is how we then risk management uh, is integrated as part of managing that service that I don't have to manage the service in one software and then manage the risks associated with that service in another software. Because if you give that to the first line, then they will of course spend more time in managing the service software and less time in managing the risks related to that service software. Yeah, so we need to sort of combine that management aspect with the risk management aspect together. So that's the services element, and that's where then you know the solution can be used from uh, for operational resilience uh, perspective. Uh, the next thing I wanted to show was process. So that's another core activity of first what first line is doing on the day to day basis that they are operating these different processes, you know, and particularly at the operational layer, those processes then is where uh, bulk of the time is being spent off the first line. So what we want to do is we want to give them a tool where they can then document and capture all their processes, but also manage those processes in the software. So if I have this process, so let me open the software called executing market campaigns on social media platform, which will be one of the process, let's say in the marketing team, uh, then somebody in the marketing team will be responsible for that process. So they can use the solution to manage all the details around that process. So we've taken all the best practices around process management uh, and incorporated that into the solution. So you can use this to manage and document your processes. And if there are any actions or issues related to those processes, you can sort of capture those. And in the business management tab, you can then see how that process then is touching various parts of the organization. So in this case, we can see that this process is then also related to that particular business objective uh, of the organization. So if I was the process owner, then I will use the software to manage uh, the three or four processes I'm responsible for. And I can use this to manage the processes. And then in the risk management tab, 
I can use the same software to manage the risks related to that particular process. Okay, so that same concept then applies that you can use then any of those uh, aspects which we saw on the PowerPoint slides. If I just open that PowerPoint slide, that we have all of these elements in the software and then different people in the organizations are responsible for different elements. If I was a process owner, then I'll spend bulk of my time around that process. If I'm a product owner, I'll spend bulk of the time around my product. If I'm responsible for three or four IT systems, then I'll spend bulk of my time in the asset part of the solution. So if everybody is then contributing in terms of capturing the data, linking of what they're managing to other things, then as an organization, you suddenly get this 360 degree view of how everything in the front office is connected to the middle office, to the back office, and you're able to then get much better visibility uh, than if you were using you know, six, seven different software to manage these different elements, then you don't get that visibility. And if you're using Excel to manage all that, then yeah, definitely you don't get any visibility around how different aspects of the business are uh, connected. So, so that sort of is the is the process related aspect where we can we allow then in the solution that you can use this to manage your process and then managing risk is just part of that process management process. Another key aspect of the first line is they're managing all of these different assets. So assets may be IT systems, it may be buildings, it may be data about our customers. So a lot of people then in the first line are responsible for these assets and they have to make sure these assets are protected, these assets continue to operate. So, so in this case, if I was responsible for, let's say, the core banking IT system, then I can use this software to manage that particular asset uh, and then any actions, any issues related to that particular asset, I can manage all that within the solution. So we've again incorporated all the asset management best practices in the solution. And again, in the business management, you'll be able to see how the core banking IT system then is connected with the rest of the business. And then in the risk management tab, you'll be able to see what are the different risks we need to manage in relation to the core banking IT system. Yeah, so again, you are able to you know, then see those uh, interconnections. So this is another important part of yeah, what First Line is doing, especially from an operational perspective. So we've talked about objectives. Uh, so that's where a lot of sales marketing uh, teams will be focused on those objectives. Then we've talked about business services. A lot of the operational uh, uh, operational people would be uh, responsible or operating and managing those services. And then we've talked about processes and then we've talked about assets. The next thing I want to touch, so let me just go uh, to the home page, uh, is a third party. So if we have a procurement team, which is then managing all the relationships uh, with the different uh, third parties. Uh, okay, so let me just refresh that and see if we are able to see that. Okay, and I, I'll just click into the third parties here because I, that's where I wanna go. So this is where the procurement team or vendor risk management team uh, can then manage all the third parties, which then includes all the vendors in, in the same way where if I open SAP, for example, which is one of the third parties we have to deal with, then I can use this to just manage the relationship with the third parties. I can use it to see how this third party is then connected with the rest of my business. So which are the business processes then which depend on SAP, which are the business services, products and assets which then depend on SAP. So I'm able to see that interconnection. So if, if we were changing, let's say a supplier from SAP to Oracle for core banking, then I'll be able to easily see what are all the different business processes, all the different products which may be impacted as part of that swapping uh, a certain product from one vendor to another vendor. And in the risk management is where I will then be able to see any risks which are relevant for uh, our relationship with uh, SAP in this case, which is the which is the third party. So then I will I will I will be able to use the system to manage all the risks related to the key vendors and the key third parties uh, we are we are dealing with. Okay. So that's sort of is another key aspect of what your first line is also doing on, on the day-to-day -day basis. And then let me touch on the decision uh, management aspect and then I'll open it, uh, open it up for questions. So this is, I think, uh, one of the biggest missing link then in, in majority of the GRC software out there uh, where they don't provide functionality to for the first line business unit to make a business decision. And that's what the first line is doing on a day in and day out basis that there are probably hundreds of 
decisions being made by the first line every week, every month. And then of course, not all decisions are very important. So you can yeah, set up criteria that only if the decision involves you know, more than a million pounds worth of investment, then you know, we want to follow a structured process. And otherwise, yeah, we, can, we don't have to use uh, the software for managing decisions, which may be 10,000 pounds or uh, 20,000 uh, pounds related. But that's where you can define those criteria on what type of decisions do you want to capture. Uh, so what we provide here is we provide a, a, a way for you to create a decision repository. So if I click on all decisions, I will be able to then see all the different decisions which have been made by different parts of the organization. Uh, and then I can look at all the decisions which we are currently making. So open decisions are, we are in the process. We haven't made the decision. We are still thinking about it. So I can quickly see which parts of the business units are making what type of decisions at the moment. And then decisions under implementation is where I will be able to see where a decision has been made. And now we are going through the implementation process. So, so this is where I'll open this decision where the decision is around upgrading the Omega core banking IT system, which this bank is using. So they had to make the decision to make that upgrade. So let me show you how what we allow in terms of allowing the first line to capture that decision in a structured way. So in this case, you capture the details of the decision, you capture the scope of the decision, uh, you capture the timelines around that decision, uh, and then you capture yeah, what are the desired outcomes? So what are we looking for? So, so we're looking to migrate, you know, that we want to move to a more uh, modern technology platform. We want to migrate to a platform where there is adequate skill sets available in the market, and we want to increase the level of resilience of our core banking system. So whichever option we go ahead with, we wanna make sure that we are able to achieve those outcomes. Uh, then in terms of decision frames, you know, there are various ways in which you can look at this decision. So you can look at this decision, either just yeah, keep the lowest cost possible or minimize the cost of operating the technology, but not in the short term, but over a 10 year period. So we may pay more now, but if the cost over the 10 year is less then that would be a preferred option. And then we want to upgrade uh, in terms of increasing the agility uh, of the organization so we can do more innovation, we can launch more products more quickly uh, in the future. So you can then capture what are the different perspectives uh, the decision makers are considering when they were making this particular decision. And then if I go to the alternatives tab, so this is where then you uh, model the decision. So, so whoever is then making the decision. So typically there will be a committee or team of people who will be making important decision that is unlikely that, you know, big decisions will be made by single individuals anymore in financial services organizations. So there'll be either a team or a committee responsible for a decision. And, and this is the tool then that team can use where you first define your decision drivers. So in this case, we're saying that we could either go for a cloud installation or we could do it all in-house or we can completely outsource everything to the vendor. So, so I'm defining those three different drivers. And then I can uh, consider, okay, another uh, decision driver is that we could go to FIS, which is a core banking software provider. We could go to Oracle, or we could stick with, uh, we could stay with SAP. So they're already using SAP uh, at the moment. Another option would be that either you do the upgrade in multiple phases. So we do it in small, you know, four or five phases, or you do it as one big bank. So, so first you identify all the different drivers which are relevant for that decision. And then you model the different alternatives. So in this case, we're saying that the most conservative option is that we stay with SAP and we stay in-house. So with that option, uh, the likelihood of success is very high because we've been doing that for 25 years. We know everything which is involved with that. Uh, so we think we'll be able to achieve that. The likelihood of success is very high. And then it will cost us between 68 and 85 million you know, over that 10 year period to implement that particular option. But then you, as part of decision-making, you also want to consider other alternatives. So, so in this case, another uh, less conservative option here is that we would stay with SAP, but instead of installing it in-house, we will migrate on the cloud platform of SAP. So in this case, also we stick with the same vendor, but just move from in-house to cloud. And then I can see that the investment here needed is 49 to 57 million. So we can see from a cost perspective, it's slightly uh, less than uh, doing it in-house. And then I can look at the other options. So the semi-conservative option here is then move to FIS or Oracle with an in-house uh, installation. And that would cost between 55 and 69 million. And then the ultra radical option is that we outsource the whole thing, you know, so we don't care 
whether it's in the cloud or it's in-house, we just outsource and then let the outsourcing vendor decide. And in that case, the cost will be you know, between 40 and 55 million. And in this case, I can open those particular alternatives in case you're wondering yeah, where are those investments coming from. So this is where I can open the alternative and then I will be able to pick from the drivers. I will be able to you know, select, uh, I will be able to capture the investments. So in this case, we've captured the five-year cost of the outsource core banking. And then I, I am able to capture what are the risks we will have to deal with if we go with that particular option. Because each of those options now will have a slightly different risk profile. So as part of the decision making, we want the decision makers to consider all the relevant risks as part of making that decision. We don't want decision makers to make the decision and then they think about the risks after that. So with each of those alternatives, we are then doing the likelihood of success. So what is the likelihood that this particular alternative will give us the desired outcome? We can capture the investment so we can look at the cost element involved in each alternative. And then we capture the different risks and we can assess those risks. And then that gives me like this risk score we have here. So we can see that 55 million yeah, is the most cost effective option is to go with the core banking software, but it is also coming up with a lot of risks. And then it becomes that business decision to say, okay, are we willing to accept the high level of risk of going with that alternative? for the lower cost option it is offering us. Or we can say, oh, actually, it's not that cost effective compared to the SAP option. So that so sounds like a better option that you know, it's only 2 million extra from the maximum investment perspective. Uh, and we stay with our vendor. We still get to modernize everything. And from a risk perspective, you know, there are fewer risks we are exposed to as part of that alternative. So, so then that whole decision-making process may take three months, four months, where we talk to the different vendors, we collect the information. So, so the first line can use the software to capture all that information, bring that information together. And then the decision-making committee then gets this screen where they can then see, okay, what is the summary of all the different alternatives? And then the committee makes the decision. And once the decision is made, then you can go into the action part. And this is where then you can either create a project. So if you're going to implement the project to roll out that change, then you can capture those project and then manage that project in the system. Or if, there are, if it's a smaller decision, there are certain actions you need to implement, then you can also create actions uh, out of uh, uh, that particular decision. Yeah. And in the risk management is where then you will be able to see uh, all the risks related to that decision and all the risks related to all the different alternatives. So then, you know, if you wanted to just view, look at all the risks we've identified across all the alternatives, then this uh, screen can then yeah, uh, give that uh, particular perspective. But we're looking at risk management as part of that decision-making process. So that's where ISO 31000, COSO ERM, the Basel uh, best practice principles, they're all saying that this is the nirvana, that if you want to integrate risk management into the first line, the only way to do that is integrate in the decision-making process. And in UK, we even have regulations uh, like SMCR, which requires uh, senior executives to be able to demonstrate how they made certain decisions. So if you made some decision four years, five years ago, and something goes wrong, then senior executive needs to be able to demonstrate that, okay, when I made that decision four years ago, this is the set of information which was available for me. So I did the right things. And if we don't have this sort of a decision repository to capture all those decisions and learn from those decisions, then it's it's yeah, uh, it's poor from a risk management perspective, but it's also very poor from a just general business management perspective. So it, so decision making is you know an integral part of running an effective organization that an organization which can be more structured around how it makes its decision, uh, you know, will be a lot more successful than an organization which is making lots of decisions, but there is no refined a defined structure that everybody you know, is doing it in a different way. We're not learning, we're making the same sort of bad quality decisions every three years because different people come in. There is no lesson learned from the previous decisions we've made. So we continue to make the same mistakes every three to four years. Uh, and you know, the organization is not getting any better over that longer time frame. So there are various aspects of you know, sort of yeah, integrating decision-making in part of uh, that risk management story. But of course, it also then gives you that benefit uh, that by allowing risks to be managed and considered as part of decision-making, uh, we, we are then you know, making sure that first line is thinking about the risks 
And, and then you can set a criteria that yeah, any decision about 1 million pound or 10 million pound or 15 million pound that they have to go through this process. And this is where then all the approvals around those decisions can happen. So that sort of is what I wanted to share. Uh, I'm not going into yet yeah, the, the standard risk management uh, details because all of that is, is bread and butter. Uh, so we have yeah, all the controls functionality where you can create your control register, you can assess those controls, you can test those controls. Uh, we have incidents where you can capture your operational risk incidents and impacts and causes. Uh, we have issue management where you can yeah, capture all your issues and remediation action. So, so all that is standard bread and butter, which is why I didn't focus into that because yeah, all the hundred software solutions out there, they provide that and we also provide that, but uh, that's, you know, that's just uh, to match with the vendors the, where we have gone further than all the other vendors is thinking about what do we need to do in the software to bring first line and, and make them as part of that risk management process. And, and the only way to do that is give them a tool to manage their business and then integrate risk management as part of managing the business. That's the only way we are going to get their buy-in. Okay. So with that, let me then stop sharing and I will check on the chat to see if there's any questions there, uh, but I'm open for Q&A now. So you tell me uh, if there are any questions. So I don't see anything on chat. Uh, and I will stop the recording now. So let me 